Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I don't need too much of an introduction for my first guest this morning. If you've heard him perform, you're already a fan. Bobby Nesbitt has performed for audiences not just across the country, but across the world. And fortunately for us, he loves performing at the place he calls home Key West. Bobby, it's a pleasure having you here with me this morning. Thank you. It's good to be here this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Bobby, I am one of those people who heard you perform for the first time and became a fan oh, immediately. Thank so you. It's fun thank talking you. with you this morning. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. I understand, Bobby, that you come from a family of musicians, so it is in your blood. It's in my blood. My father was a, a wonderful singer. I was born in western New York near Rochester, and he always would sing, and I would hear all the big band music and Broadway, and my mother played clarinet, and then I first started playing trumpet, mm -hmm. and then they recognized that music was a, easy for me, and they said, why don't you take piano, and so I did, and there's no looking back now. <laughs> and I've been playing now for 52 years. Wow. I can't believe it. And my younger brother also played uh, guitar and trombone, so we had a very musical family. Now, you come from New York, Bobby, and I know you spent time in New York before Key West came into the picture. Right. After I went to college in upstate New York, I moved to New York City. Like everybody wanted to be on stage and everything and I found Jenna that when I would go to auditions They were more interested that I could play piano and and so I thought well This might be a way to make a living and then I got cast in something in the show closed And I was very despondent and at the ripe old age of 25 I said I'm gonna go to Key West where I had been once before and I never left and what made you want to come to Key West? So had you been here in the past? Just before? with my parents, yeah. We mm -hmm. had a great time and I said I just and a friend and I and we said, let's just go to Key West and see if we like it. And mm -hmm. I, I got a job. My very first job was working at the Ramada Inn out here, uh no, Logan's Lobster House at the end of Simonson Street for five dollars an hour playing piano. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And then I moved to um, to uh, the Ramada Inn, uh, which isn't there anymore, for uh, for another five five dollars an hour seemed to be the salary. But then uh, you know I just there weren't many people that were doing what I do that play piano and and sing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So and it just took off for you. It from did. Their it body. did take off. Yes. Now you exactly. did live leave Key West. Two times. Right. My partner, Mike Mulligan, and I, uh, I got an offer to come to Germany for a one-month contract. And we said, oh, let's just go. And so we stayed three years. And I ended up really at one of my two really grandest jobs in London at the Savoy Hotel for a year, which was really uh, terrific. But unfortunately, I had trouble with work permits. You're only allowed six months, and then you can extend another six months, and I had to leave. Uh, but I came back to Key West. Mm -hmm. yeah. Came back to Key West, and then you did leave again for South San Francisco. I, yes. Uh, I kept doing Key West. I had a great time. This, this was in the 80s, the late 80s. I would do Key West in the winter and Europe in the summer. So... Mm -hmm. And then in, what was it, 1996, I got an offer from the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco to come out for the summer, and I did, and it lasted another three years. Bobby, you've played in so many great venues all over the world. Mm -hmm. How does Key West compare to some of Key those West venues? Key West has the best audiences, really, in the world. They're just, they're so supportive, and, you know, no matter where I am, they will, they will turn out, you know. And Key West has seen a lot of ups and downs. We used to have lots of piano bars. All the hotels had entertainment. Very few do now, except for Beachside, where I work on Saturday night. And, you know, I always say to them, thank you for keeping music going. They have it seven nights a week. Um, but it has changed uh, here. Uh, we're a real music town, not so much for what I do anymore. There's very few piano bars, but mm -hmm. what we have is the great performing arts, the Tennessee Williams, the Waterfront, the Red Barn, and now all these other uh, venues are, are starting. Bobby, you started up something really special here called Bobby in the Lobby. Tell <laughs> us about that. Yeah. I went to Frank Wood at Tennessee Williams and I said, you know, I have an idea for a little show I want to do. I wanted to do Instead of doing a whole night where singers do a little of this, a little of that, I wanted to just do one songwriter, one night of Gershwin, one night of Cole Porter, Irving Berlin. And we did, gosh, I said, well, we'll just try it for one year. We did three shows that year, and it lasted seven years. Wow. And, and finally, I closed it last year because I said, I've kind of run out of people. <laughs> to do, you know, I, I said everything I wanted to say. So we, we closed the Bobby in the Lobby series. I always had one singer, or two singers, a, a girl singer and a guy singer with me and me. And I would sit at the piano and talk, talk, talk about all the, the, the um, songwriters. And it was kind of like 
uh, elder hostile, they said. <laughs> the people in the audience, they would learn a lot about the songwriters. It was great. Now, Bobby in the Lobby is done, but I know that you have some other upcoming performances. Right. Uh, Bobby in the Lobby is done, although I am performing in the Lobby, mm -hmm. but it's just not called, that was the name of the show, <laughs> Bobby in the Lobby. Mm -hmm. I'm performing on January 5th and 6th, a tribute to Bobby Short, who was the preeminent singer-pianist of the 20th century at the Carlisle Hotel and with Joe Dallas and Skipper Cribbits we're recreating a night at the Carlisle Hotel. And Wonderful. Fifth and sixth. Yeah, it's going to be a really, really special night. No, I look forward to that. And Bobby, like we've talked about, you have moved away before but you have came back here. Do you think Key West will always be in your future? Oh, always, yeah. We just sold our house too. <laughs> just bought a new one. So we have moved and I said, I'm not doing that again after being in one home for 23 years. and. Yeah, we, we definitely be, be in my blood. Plus, I, I really, Key West gives you opportunities, um, like, like the Little White House, too, which I do with Carmen Rodriguez. You know, it was sitting there in Harry Truman's piano, and I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be fun to do a show in Harry's living room, playing Harry's piano, and about the history of our country during that time, and what was popular. And we're on our third season there. We started with the, the songs of the Truman era the first year. Last year we did the World War II, and this year we're doing the USO, a tribute to the USO, Carmen Rodriguez and me. So Great. Well, I look fun. forward to that, That's, too. It is fun. <laughs> All right, Bobby. It's been a pleasure talking Thank with you, you this morning. Thank you really, for being on. Info out. <laughs> I had a long time down here. <laughs> well, I'll definitely have to have you back on. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Jim. I'm going to take a quick break right now. There's much more to come this morning. Stay with me.